We've seen some shocking eliminations on Hell's Kitchen, but these are some of the times that viewers like you and me were left absolutely speechless. And I'm coming out swinging on this video, let me tell ya. Since this chef had the most brutal mid-service elimination in the history of the show. Do me a big favor, yeah, chef. yeah? Get your apron off, get packed, and off out! First, get out! Wondering why? Well, Ramsay gathered all the chefs in the pantry, observed Kevin's presence, and loudly yelled at him to remove his apron, pack his bags, and leave. That's it. Straight to the point, no frills. He didn't get a single elimination remark or the customary portrait burning scene. Kevin simply vanished into thin air. What's more, his exit interview was never even aired. So what exactly did he do to deserve this? Let's recap real quick. So during the family night dinner service, Kevin was in charge of the fish station. Between his raw lobster and raw risotto in the previous services, he knew that all eyes were gonna be on him that night. It's 45 minutes into family night at Hell's Kitchen. But here's the thing, just like any other contestant on the show, Kevin desperately wanted to prove he was there to stay. However, trouble started when he accidentally plopped his scallops on the grill too soon. The thing is, scallops only need 90 seconds to cook, while Ellen's dish, on the other hand, needed a full five minutes. And since the whole team was thrown into disarray, Ramsey got pretty mad. He blamed Kevin for messing up the team's first orders. Now, Kevin had an opportunity to fix things, but instead of redeeming himself, he screwed up even further. In his very next order, Kevin's scallops ended up being overcooked, and we all know how Ramsey feels about overcooked scallops. It's pathetic and it's embarrassing. Ramsey himself had to jump in and show him how it was done. In the meantime, the team sparked a huge mess, with Joe spilling sauce all over the place. And then out of nowhere, this happened. What the? Oh, hot, hot, hot. I grabbed it with my oh, hand. My I grabbed it with my 100% grade A chaos right there. As a result, the whole blue team had to hustle and remake their orders from scratch. Despite all that, Kevin managed to get the scallops ready right as Ramsey asked for them. And considering he'd been schooled before, you might think he nailed the dish this time. But if it had, we wouldn't be here talking about him. Yep, they were both overcooked and undercooked at the same time. God, how the hell do you even do that? And Ramsey had just shown Kevin the right way to do it, so you know the guy was pissed. The mistakes kept piling up, and the next raw thing we got to witness was Ramsey's temper. And when Ramsey starts throwing stuff around, you know we've gone past the point of no return. And now we're up to speed. That's when he pulled everyone from the blue team into the pantry and demanded an explanation. And before anyone could come up with a decent excuse, Kevin got the boot. But Ramsey had one more question to ask. Who's next? Wow. I guess he meant every word he said. I mean, the shock and dread on their faces were palpable. Jeez, that was crazy. Now, do you think Kevin had it coming? I mean, this dude actually served packaged food for the signature dish challenge, and he never really bothered to recover, in my opinion. Store-bought dough, store-bought Caesar salad dressing. But you have to agree this is one of the most brutal ejections we've ever seen on the show. I mean, dude never even got the chance to plead his case. It was as if he fell into the void, never to be seen again. But this next chef was the first contestant to be eliminated despite being on the winning team. Jack it off and you're leaving Hell's Kitchen. Let's break down what happened with Carol during that fateful dinner service, shall we? So Carol was in charge of the meat station and had this gratin dauphinois dish on the menu to go with the red team's halibut. But things got messy real quick. First up, when she brought the gratin up to Ramsey, it was raw and tough, and that wasn't gonna slip past him. Taste them. Now you, you go there, yeah, that's a nice slice for you. Yeah. When he asked who cooked the potatoes, Carol owned up and said she did. Well, good on her for that at least. But she made a grave mistake when she thought Andrea was supposed to oven cook them before the orders came in. And that left JP to play the bearer of bad news to the customers. You the decimal potatoes are undercooked. If they go in when the order comes in, they should What's be fine. What's undercooked? That explanation was not sitting right with Ramsey. He made sure to give a quick lesson to Carol. A gratin dauphinoise needs to be cooked before service. Yes, chef. And then, out of nowhere, Ramsey threw a curveball, accusing Carol of sabotaging Andrea's game. 
And what did Carol do? She tried to talk back to him, and that only made him even angrier. At that point, Andrea was feeling kind of embarrassed for Carol, because on any given day, Carol would be the one pointing out others' mistakes. And this time, she was in the hot seat herself. Sometime later, when Ramsey asked her how long it'd take to fix the potatoes, she guessed 10 minutes, even though she still had no clue what had gone wrong in the first place. Meanwhile, Ramsey let the customers know they'd have to wait about 10 minutes for their food. But not before letting Carol have it for messing up their food. Look at them, the poor souls. Are you stupid? No, chef, I'm not. Turns out, Carol had boiled the potatoes in cream for a whole hour during prep time. And, well, Ramsey's reaction speaks for itself. For an hour. Boiling cream for an hour. Crunchy gratin dough from what I was useless. Trust me, when Ramsey's calling you useless, consider your time in the kitchen pretty much done. In a desperate attempt to redeem herself, Carol tried to salvage the potatoes by pouring hot cream on them. But nothing could save those potatoes now. Are you mad? No, chef. There was no saving those potatoes. None whatsoever. Stop, stop, they're already dead. And Ramsay had no choice but to force the red team to come up with a new side dish because of it. I wouldn't even serve that to a pig farm, madam. Anyway, after the potato disaster, Carol thought she'd give it another shot with the steak. But nope, that steak turned out rare instead of medium. Medium, and it comes out mid-rare. My head is buzzing. Jean-Philippe even had to walk back with one of Carol's steaks because of how poorly she'd cooked it. That was the final straw for Ramsay, who decided to shut down both the kitchens then and there. During the elimination round, Carol was called out for her inconsistency. She set a precedent for being the first one on the winning team to be sent home, and didn't even get a chance to defend herself. And to add insult to injury, Carol knew she was out of her depth in Hell's Kitchen. I just put her out of her misery. Talk about rubbing salt in the wound. It doesn't take much for things to go terribly wrong on a show as intense as Hell's Kitchen, but the ones I'll be going over today have to be the worst of the bunch. Do you remember Joy Parham Thomas from season 12? You know, the same person who decided to leave the competition and later vented her frustrations on Instagram? It didn't excite people to see a, a black girl who was actually just there to cook and, you know, mind her business and keep her head, head down and do her thing. Like, they needed to villainize somebody. Yeah, she actually did that. But here's the deal. I believe Joy really grabbed the attention of the whole Hell's Kitchen community well after the show because of a pretty serious claim. She's convinced that she was judged based on factors other than her cooking and leadership skills. She was convinced that the show set up the black woman to be the villain of the season. And even if we entertain the notion of racial bias for a moment, she still walked away from the kitchen during service, which, I mean, the producers didn't make her do. That was on her. She could have left before or after the service, but nope. When the pressure was on, she simply threw in the towel and called it quits. But what exactly unfolded during that service? So Joy was responsible for the fish station. When asked to taste Melanie's capellini, she bluntly said that it tasted terrible because, say it with me now, it wasn't seasoned. When it came to coordinating entrees, she kept Rochelle and Jason in the loop as far as timing was concerned. But then, she served up the halibut before Rochelle was ready with her Wellingtons. Ramsay had to remind her that the sauce needed to come first, and he wasn't willing to stop and start over. I'm not stopping and starting and stopping and starting. I don't want you to, Chef. Jason was puzzled by the screw-up, and she presented her sauce without any muscles in it. She got frustrated, considering she had a lot on her plate with the fish station but she eventually managed to get her second attempt accepted and sent out to the dining room. On the next order, she failed to give Rochelle the correct timing, which understandably annoyed Ramsey. She rather impolitely told him this. If you feel like I'm holding the kitchen up and I'm slowing everything down, how about I'll leave and you can have somebody else work fish? Oh boy, here we go. Naturally, Ramsey accused her of having a bad attitude. When are you going to start getting attitude? I'm not getting the attitude, chef. Okay, well, they talk to me. When he asked her for the time on the garnishes, Jason stated he needed 90 seconds. But Joy went ahead and served the halibut without waiting for the garnish, which only fueled the fire that was Ramsey's temper. Jason understood the situation, but she seemed confused, prompting Ramsey to pull her aside and explain it to her. Look at me. Chef, I'll he Can I, I finish my sentence? Plain English, I would like the garnish and the halibut before the halibut. And I think you already know, it was not gonna go down well. 
A young lady, if you're in the mood, don't take it out of my food. I'm done. That was the tipping point for her as she waved the white flag of surrender. Despite Rochelle and Melanie pleading with her not to quit, she removed her chef's jacket and headed back to the dorms to pack her things. Ramsey followed her and called out her selfish attitude for giving up over a single mistake. This escalated into a heated argument, with both sides accusing the other of not listening, which, I mean, is kinda ironic. It concluded with doubling down about her quitting while well, Ramsey retorted that her cooking reflected her attitude. Back in the dorms, Joy was hastily stuffing her clothes into her bag when sous chef Andy walked in and asked what was going on. She felt like Ramsey had lost his cool and painted herself in a much better light than Ramsey. But sous chef Andy gently reminded her that Ramsey's temperament was nothing new and she wasn't any less guilty than he was for her attitude. I'm, I'm beat, like I'm beat down, chef. Like this is just certain things you just can't deal with or whatever and then it's just like i've been beat down enough i can't take but so much and just tired like i'm really just tired that's all it comes down to is like anything i do when i put everything into it it's never enough joy was well aware that the competition had been bringing out her less admirable side but when sous chef andy told her she needed to tough it out she felt utterly beaten down it seemed like no matter what she did, it was never enough for Ramsey. Man, I mean, I get that must have been a terrible feeling. I couldn't help but feel bad for her. However, sous chef Andy offered a different perspective. She reminded Joy that Ramsey was, in fact, her most significant supporter and reminded her what he had said during the evaluations. That's what he's doing. The people that are the hardest on you in your life are the ones that care about you most. In a moment of clarity, Joy realized that she had squandered a genuine chance to win because of her impulsiveness. As she debated her next steps, it dawned on her that she needed to apologize to Ramsey and plead her case for another opportunity. However, she never managed to summon the courage to make amends with him. I feel like I let Chef Ramsey down and I didn't think about anybody but myself when I walked out that kitchen. I wish she did because Ramsey following her out of the kitchen shows that he cared for her. I bet he would have given her a chance at redemption. How about you? But on the flip side, she believed it was too late for her to apologize to Ramsey and mend the bridge that she had burned. She had come to terms with the fact that she had thrown away a once in a lifetime opportunity. And now she was stuck living with the consequences of her decision. And I threw it all away. I threw it all away and that's just, something I, I have to live with. Man, everything about this situation sucks. I don't even have a funny quip or anything about it to make us feel better. So let's move on. But nothing is harder than watching this next elimination. Outside of this competition, you're just not ready to be a head chef. Please give me your jacket. <laughs> ah, rest in peace, Jessica. You will be remembered. So let's dig into what went down during the Cook For Your Life Challenge. Jessica was named as the weakest link by the red team, and you could almost see her turn pale. As a result, she had to face off against Richard from the blue team in a very intense challenge. But you see, she was all about proving her doubters wrong. Back in the kitchen, Jessica was full of fire and confidence, having worked with these kinds of dishes before. But oops, she added pepper to the risotto and Joy told her off for it. Never put anything black into something that's supposed to be white. Jessica then asked about adding wine to the risotto, but the guys reminded her that it was against the rules. The wine? Hey, 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 hey. hey, hey. No, 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 no. Later, disaster struck when she dropped the halibut and it completely broke apart. Oh my God, what is she doing? But thanks to her quick thinking, she put another piece on top and sent it right back into the oven. As judgment came closer and closer, she was a bundle of nerves, but she was even more determined not to go home, so she kept fighting. Finally, it was time to present her dish. She presented scallops that were cooked rather nicely despite being paired with some overcooked onions. The risotto, however, was piled too high, was a bit too dense, and overcooked by just a mere 30 seconds. Not too bad, right? Well, a last minute, unintentional addition soured the whole thing. Is that a toothpick? Yeah, a toothpick. 
damn, how did she not see that earlier? But hey, on the bright side, her halibut was praised for being perfectly seasoned. Anyway, despite the mixed reviews, Jessica was still hopeful about winning. And when Richard's risotto ended up overcooked, she was even more relieved now that things were leaning in her favor. I think that his time is up. But then, that other shoe finally dropped. Jessica was eliminated for serving undercooked lobster and overcooked halibut. Jessica was heartbroken and tearfully begged Ramsey for another chance. Please. You did Please, exceptionally you. well. Oh, no. You could see that even Sandra couldn't get a grip on her emotions, but Ramsey stayed firm on his decision. But he at least praised her for being a great competitor. Please, I will come back live. Please. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Ramsey encouraged her to stick with her love for food and sent her out with a pat on the back. But she was a mess. All through her exit interview, Jessica sobbed over her dreams being crushed. Ramsey's decision was tough, and Jessica's elimination was definitely a bitter pill to swallow. What's more, the absence of the usual coat hanging and portrait burning sequence only added to the abruptness of it all. If you ask me, I think she had her share of highs and lows, and even though Ramsey recognized her efforts, the few mistakes she made cost her big time. It's clear that this elimination hit her hard, but Ramsey's words showed that he saw potential in her in spite of it. However, some viewers are convinced that she didn't deserve to be kicked out like that. Chef, I'm a fighter. I was homeless about a year ago. I mean, I can totally understand why Jessica broke down the way she did. The competition was her only lifeline, and she couldn't handle going back to the grind she was trying to get out from under. Well, at least Ramsey didn't let her hard work go unnoticed. But this next chef? Oh, Ramsey cared so little that he didn't even bother to listen to his plea. I'm not listening to your <laughs> Give me your jacket. Matthew from season 20 had a shitty start, and I mean that literally. During the signature dish challenge, Ramsey praised the classic presentation of the Chipino, but... I didn't take out the crap, I didn't devein it, and I'm like, shoot. Yeah, Ramsey wasn't happy about that little discovery one bit. He asked Matthew why he didn't bother cleaning it, and Matthew came up with a really lame excuse. He said that he just didn't notice it. Ramsey even offered Matthew a taste of the shrimp's special sauce, which he wisely declined. What's more, Keanu actually reminded him to get the poop out. I know you're now legal to drink, but were you actually drunk when you put this dish together? No, sir. But that was just the start of Matthew's antics. Sometime later, during the alcohol challenge, Matthew was making a bourbon rubbed chicken with cream sauce. He knew he had to bounce back after the disaster that was the signature dish challenge. And he thought he had really stepped up and rocked it this time. Surprisingly, when the blue team discussed their top three dishes, Jay gave Matthew's dish a thumbs up, thinking it was executed pretty darn well. And that was how Matthew landed a spot in the blue team's top three, and was the last one to have Ramsey judge his dish. But Ramsey, still fondly remembering the shrimp mishap, was hoping Matthew would make up for it this time. And, well, he did. Or at least it looked that way. When Matthew presented his bourbon glazed chicken breast, Ramsey loved its rustic look. But then, when Ramsey cut into the chicken, that rustic facade came crumbling down. You guys wanted me to eat pink chicken? Seriously? No shit, no shit. No shit. Raw as the day it was born. What's even more infuriating was that this dish made it into the top three and still ended up being undercooked. Now, let's cut to the 300th dinner service, and this was a big deal since it was Matthew's last chance to prove himself. But sadly, things got off to a rocky start. He brought up a lamb dish, but Ramsey took it to the end of the line and had everyone touch it. Wondering why? Well, Ramsey pointed out that the meat was rare, but hold on. Just a second later, he corrected himself, saying it was actually raw. To make things worse, Ramsey noticed that the chef was smiling about it, despite being right in front of Mike Tyson, that night's guest. Yeah, I wouldn't be smiling like an idiot in front of the Mike Tyson, I'll tell you that much. Dude was begging to get punched in the face. It's oh, right, oh, oh, pass rah, me rah, rah. It's not funny, Matthew. After that embarrassing situation, Ramsey called the men out and asked them to get their act together. Now, since Matthew was slowing the team down, Peyton decided to step up and take charge of the meat. But when the VIP order was called out, both of them completely blanked. 
How do you forget? How, how does that happen? Ramsey was bewildered as to how both of them could screw up like that. There was only one way to fix the situation. And so, Ramsey asked Peyton and Matthew to apologize to Tyson personally. And you can tell that Peyton was beyond embarrassed at that point. Just as he should have been. I'm embarrassed in front of Mike Tyson. I'm embarrassed in front of Chef Ramsey. In a desperate attempt to prevent any more disasters from happening, Matthew resorted to using a digital thermometer to check the cook on the chicken. And while that might be pretty normal for you and me, it had no place in a professional kitchen. Trenton was surprised he even had one. Where the hell did we get digital thermometers? And just then, Ramsey asked for a time on the order, and things got chaotic. Peyton and Antonio gave different timings, and we all know how much Ramsey loves that. He gathered the team and warned them they were going too fast. After they returned to the kitchen, things didn't get much better. The team was eventually kicked out because they were acting like they didn't even know what was going on. Back downstairs, Ramsey showed them something that Matthew left behind in the kitchen. Wondering what? Well, take a look. A meat thermometer. He couldn't believe they were still messing up, even while using things like that as a crutch. We still couldn't produce any cooked protein. During the eliminations, Matthew was nominated along with Peyton and Jay. Ramsey rolled out all of his greatest hits. The unclean shrimp, the raw chicken, and now the raw lamb. Ramsey's patience for him had run thin. And so, he got the axe, citing him as the worst performer among the young guns thus far. Worst of all, your attitude sucks. Now, here's where I disagree with Chef Ramsey a bit. Matthew took his elimination like a champ. Check out this post. He said, One of the many hard lessons I've learned through all this process is that life is silly, crazy, and we have zero control over how others view us. Laughing at your own mistakes takes away their power over you. I have made so many mistakes. On the show, in my personal life, and in my career. But now, I just try to laugh and have fun. Because all my mistakes have helped me grow. Life moves forward, and so do I. Gotta commend the attitude. While he had a horrible run on the show, at least he's honest about it. Glad to see he's doing well now. And viewers definitely have his back. Now, how can we talk about brutal eliminations and not mention the Spaghetti King himself? You're standing there, you screwed me, and you're useless. So, dude was in charge of the appetizer station, thinking he could kick off the final five with some awesome starters. But things didn't go quite as planned. First off, Ramsey noticed that he was already cooking risotto, even though there were no orders in yet. A few minutes later, more and more risotto started piling up on the hot plate, which totally baffled Ramsey. How many f***ing risottos are you doing up front? Look at all those pans! Ramsey wasn't too pleased, and made sure Josh knew it. And since he was losing the restaurant money, he didn't think twice before calling him this. What a f***. Donut. After the risotto, it was time for the spaghetti. And once again, Josh got started even before anybody thought about ordering it. Ramsey questioned if he'd do something like that in his own restaurant, to which Josh admitted it was a mistake. Even my mom cooked spaghetti seven minutes before she wants it. But that didn't stop him from making it over and over, cooking spaghetti as if he was on autopilot. More spaghetti in there. Sorry. We cook spaghetti to order! Ramsey even remarked that a low-end Italian joint would cook pasta to order. The man's patience was running thin, and he warned Josh that he was on thin ice. An hour into the service, Josh's appetizers were finally leaving the kitchen. It's undercooked. Oh my god! Risotto undercooked. Yep. An order of risotto came back, undercooked. Ramsey was furious and unleashed his wrath on Josh, berating him about how he was single-handedly ruining the service. Finally, Ramsey was done with Josh and decided to eliminate him on the spot. Take that off and get the hell of it. Get out! Get out! Although Josh walked out of the kitchen, Ramsey was still on his case. He was so angry that he even followed him, demanding he leave his jacket behind. He was fuming. Use this. 
This outburst inspired a ton of jokes, and some of them are downright savage, like this one here. Josh is at his wedding. He pulls back the veil to reveal his bride's face, and Gordon yells, get out! And just like that, Josh became the first ever contestant to be thrown out mid-service, not to mention at his wedding. The lack of comment from Ramsey and the absence of a retrospective montage highlighted the gravity of the situation. Josh's time on the show had come to a swift and disappointing end, but I have to say, he took it very graciously. Many would have broken down in tears or maybe even fought back at Ramsey. Next up, this elimination needs no introduction. Oh my fucking god, I don't want to leave. Get your jack off and get out! Nilka had the worst meltdown on the show, bar none. During that fateful dinner service, she was assigned to the fish station, and right from the start, things immediately got out of hand. When the first ticket came in, Nilka dropped her scallops with excitement, wanting to prove herself to Ramsey. But whoops, they turned out raw. Ramsey wasn't pleased and asked her to put them back in the pan. Later, she faced more problems, not being ready for salads and sending out raw turbot. But instead of fixing the turbot, she had the gall to throw it on the floor, which Ramsey took as a sign of giving up. Don't give up! I'm not chef, I'm trying to push my as the service continued, Nilka's nerves got the best of her. If they hadn't already, she was struggling, dropping things left and right and feeling the pressure. Ramsey tried to encourage her not to give up, but her confidence was shaken. There was a moment of support from her teammates, but mistakes kept piling up. Nilka's lobster got rejected due to being plated with the wrong sauce, and Ramsey pulled her into the pantry to understand what was going on. Tearfully, she expressed her frustration, admitting she didn't come here to lose. Ramsey gave her a serious talk and warned her that if she didn't get a grip soon, that would become a reality. I can come here to lose. I'm not weak. I don't know what I'm crying right now. Get a f***ing grip. Despite the pep talk, Nilka just couldn't get it together. She panicked, made more mistakes, and Ramsey had enough. He called for the scallops one last time, and she thankfully got it right after a reassuring chat with Jay. However, things took another turn for the worse. Her communication with the team faltered, and her lobster turned out raw again. Ramsey lost his patience and eliminated her on the spot. She was ordered to leave, but Nilka initially hesitated, trying to make her case before finally leaving. Take your jacket off and f*** off! Oh, stop those data, please! She had a hard time accepting her elimination. In a moment of intense frustration, Nilka had an emotional meltdown, tossing things around and pleading to stay in the competition. Chef, please don't say that! Nilka's determination led her back to the kitchen. Much to Ramsey's annoyance, he was stern in telling her to leave, but she resisted, insisting on staying to cook. Ramsey finally had enough, asking Benjamin to escort her out. Get her out! No, they gotta go. Go, go, go! Back in the dorms, Nilka packed her bags, clearly disappointed by her elimination. Her journey ended abruptly, leaving her frustrated and emotional about her dream being cut short. Well, it happens to the best of us, chef. Because this situation wasn't even half as bad as what happened in season 7, episode 12, when Ramsey entrusted the hot plates to sous chef Scott while he stepped out of the kitchen for a sec. Meanwhile, Jason and Benjamin promptly sent in their tuna and garnishes, keeping things rolling. So far so good, right? Well, sadly, it was just the calm before the storm. Benjamin made a bold move when he tried to call out the next ticket in Ramsey's place, which didn't sit too well with sous chef Scott. And boy, did he make it known. He confronted Benjamin with a fiery intensity that honestly rivaled Ramsey's. You think for one minute you're gonna start running this past? You may be a good cook, but you as a leader. Yes, chef. And do you think you're gonna do my job I'll leave right now. You think you can do it? No, chef. You think you can put up with all this No, chef. I know you can. I get the over there. Ooh, boy. But, um, at least he complimented him for his cooking skills, right? Anyway, as the disagreement escalated, sous chef Scott's fury only rose further. He asked Benjamin outright if he should just step aside and let him take over the hot plates. I hope he understood that was a rhetorical question. However, sous chef Scott wasn't about to let this slide. 
He got right up close, inches away from Benjamin's face, and let loose, making it abundantly clear that trying to snatch his job was not to be attempted again. And don't ever come up to my pants again and try to take my f***ing place! Like, whoa. That would easily make it to the top 10 angry meltdowns on the show. And Ramsey wasn't even involved this time. Anyway, sous chef Scott had essentially torn him a new one, and he wasn't too thrilled about it. Chef Scott ripped a asshole, you know, ripped my asshole this big. That totally sucked. But hey, at least Ben wasn't being an ass about it and took it in stride. That's something. Now, this dinner service was terrible with a capital T. Ramsey had his hands full, that's for sure. First off, Ramsey decided to give Nona a little Steak Diane tutorial, probably scared she'd burn the place down without it. And who could blame him, really? I mean, we wouldn't want Nomar Garcia Para and Mia Hamm going up in flames, right? But despite his efforts, it all started to unravel. Sabrina, let's go. I can walk this result on 30 seconds. I might seem like a little dummy on the outside, but on the inside, I'm one cooking machine. I mean, agree to disagree. And that's when Sabrina walked up with her risotto, and let's just say, Ramsey wasn't shy about telling her it was cooked to, um, let's say, extreme lengths. Sabrina, that is cooked to f and that there, yeah, fried risotto. Meanwhile, Trev's frustrations boiled over when Sabrina asked him for the time left on his spaghetti. Four minutes, that pasta's gonna cook in four minutes, Trev. There's pasta in the back. But guess who stepped in to cool things down? Or rather, heat things up further. You don't stand over here and scream. I'm the one that's waiting for food from you. Get your together and cook a pasta. I'm sure that felt like a slap to the face. I mean, Ramsey's reaction said it all. After probably way too many refires, Ramsey finally sent out the first ticket. Hallelujah! But here's the kicker. Trev and Sabrina couldn't even communicate on the next ticket. How long? Oh, four minutes now. Four minutes, awesome. How do you get a little whiny bitch like that to just shut up and cook? The whole thing left Gail fuming, while Ramsey had to pull them aside for a little chat. Come here, look at me, come here you. I need a team. Less shouting, and how about a little bit more cooking? I'm getting dragged down, yet no one's commanding the section! Yep, all the shouting in the world isn't gonna make you a good leader. Their teamwork, or lack thereof, caused a traffic jam of orders, and the diners were probably checking their watches more than enjoying their meals. Ramsey, clearly frustrated, decided to throw in the towel on appetizers and jump straight to the entrees. But he was honestly just kicking the can down the road. When Gail's halibut got stuck to the pan, this happened. This is like a sabotage. Nothing coming out. Did you see that? A pair of tongs just flew right in front of his face and my man didn't even flinch. And just when you thought it couldn't get more dramatic, about an hour and 15 minutes into the service, nothing was leaving the kitchen. Ramsey decided to throw the reins to Nona and ordered her to start serving up that steak Diane. You got this, Nona. You practiced this dish with Ramsey himself, after all. Gail, realizing her timing had to sync with Nona's, managed to get her salmon approved. And finally, some entrees started making their way out of the kitchen. But then, Sabrina... Oh boy, Sabrina. Ramsey asked her for the truffle salad, and she decided to play the forgetfulness card once again. That earned her a rather harsh accusation from Ramsey, who questioned her commitment. Look at me, hey, look, you ignorant bitch. Look at my eyes when I'm talking to you. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with her? Gosh, where do we even start? Sabrina said she hadn't given up, but her redemption attempt involved sending out a salad without dressing. More dress. No! Yes. And to add to the confusion, Jillian brought her mashed potatoes to the pass. But Ramsey found them far too salty. That is salty as f You're seasoning like this. Man, when I say it's always the seasoning, that usually means there's none of it in there. Not too much. But finally, when Gail presented her grilled salmon, Ramsey noticed a small lake forming on the plate and he rightfully thought she was giving up then and there. Then came Russell, the bearer of bad news, with a treasure trove of raw Wellingtons. 
Lawrence. Trev, feeling like the entire service was spiraling out of control, only added to the chaos. Ramsay was on the brink of erupting, and so he assembled the beleaguered chefs and delivered a stern lecture on the importance of teamwork. Sunk, you've got your hands full out there, and you're screwing me. Work as a f***ing team! Oh, and he also dropped an unsettling warning. The next person that makes the next mistake get f a lot of you. Get a grip! Well, it seems that got the chefs moving, but Russell decided to push his luck by sending out a raw ribeye. That was the straw that broke the chef's back. I can't take any more. I can't, I can't do this. I cannot do this any f***ing more. That's the face of a man who's lost faith in his team. God, even I feel disappointed and I'm not even there. Left with no other options, Ramsey kept his promise and kicked everyone out of the kitchen. In a final dramatic flourish, he tossed the raw ribeye to Trev, signaling the end of a disastrous dinner service. But hey, we all learned a valuable lesson. Don't mess with Ramsay when he's reached his boiling point. But sometimes, it's not just the contestants. Even the customers end up ruining the service. To bring outside food into a restaurant without a doubt is an insult of the highest order. After enduring three long hours of what can only be described as a turbulent service in the first season, with hungry and frustrated customers leaving, something crazy happened. I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You, you can't. What? Don't no. tell me I can't. No, you saw that right. Pizza was getting delivered to a table of cheering patrons. And then something even more terrible happened. Yes, sir, Andre, let me ask you the food. No, you did not. We got the food. I, I wish your education could be as good as your, as your voice. Jean-Philippe found himself dealing with a particularly self-assured customer. This customer tried to establish his credentials by mentioning his doctorate in music from the University of Southern California. But I wouldn't call what happened next polite. Do you have a doctorate? I do have an education. Do you have a doctorate? I do have an education. Then you are less educated would, than me, so I don't would. get in my face, buddy. This was completely out of line. Let's be honest, I think many of us would be ready to step up and defend Jean-Philippe here. He basically said, sure, this guy might have a fancy doctorate, but it doesn't mean he's educated enough to know how to behave. Thankfully, a courageous member of the crew intervened and escorted the unruly customer out of the restaurant. Thank God. Ramsey was so appalled by this that he slammed the brakes on both kitchens. Seriously, you guys, it takes no effort to offer basic human decency. But that reminds me of another contestant from the same season. And you wouldn't believe the comments he made about the waitstaff. And if you want to revisit that moment, you need to watch this video right here. I don't like waiters. F them. They're annoying. Now, next up is... Uh, wait, let me check my notes here. Not a dinner service? Not even a puke-inducing signature dish? Not even a shouting match? I mean, I guess all that leaves is... Well, this. Is it Benjamin or is it Nick? And well, everyone knows what came next. Nick got screwed over. He had an incredible run throughout the entire season. Like, I could count the number of mistakes he made all season on one hand. Many thought he deserved a spot in the final two, and some even believed he should have won. What made it even more frustrating was the way his elimination was handled. No proper goodbye, no acknowledgement of his journey on the show, nothing. It's completely baffling how a Vegas entrepreneur who's not even a chef got to decide his fate. It's like they glossed over his elimination completely. God, it had to have been the worst decision ever. It's a tough pill to swallow when even a frontrunner for the title doesn't get the recognition they deserve. Instead of a heartfelt farewell montage or some parting words from Ramsey, he was left hanging on stage, emotionally drained, and then swiftly brought back to cook on Michelle's brigade. Talk about unfair. Who else do you think was unfairly eliminated? Don't forget to drop those names in the comments. Hint, hint. Up next, in episode 13, we had the King of the Hill challenge, and it was quite a ride. Each chef had their dishes scrutinized by Gordon and Chimarusti. The coolest part, the front runner got to sit in a first class airline seat for the rest of the competition. 
But here's the twist. If someone managed to cook an even better dish, they'd overthrow the current leader, and the chef left sitting on the throne at the end would emerge victorious. Chimarusti was pretty impressed with Cheyenne's shrimp jambalaya with andouille sausage, describing it as a tasty mountain, and giving a nod to Cheyenne for nailing the sauce. And guess what happened? Cheyenne, I think you, you can stay right where you are. Cheyenne won the whole shebang. Her prize? A thrilling ride through the stunning canyons of Los Angeles. She was beyond excited, and Gordon even asked her who she wanted to take along. She chose Summer as her co-pilot. During the reward, Cheyenne was all revved up to take the wheel of a UTV and cruise those scenic roads. On the flip side, Summer, who's usually into extreme vehicles, was a bit hesitant about the whole thing. Cheyenne initially took the driver's seat and was pretty cool about letting Summer have a turn. But that's when things took a sudden and dangerous turn. But then this happened. Honestly, that whole scene had me on the edge of my seat. So terrifying to watch. Thankfully, both of them emerged unscathed, with no major injuries. Cheyenne hopped on Reddit for an AMA. That's an Ask Me Anything Q&A thread for those of you who regularly touch grass. And when someone asked her how the accident had affected her, she came clean. She admitted that it had really shaken her up. She had this big, nasty bruise on her lower belly, thanks to being locked in the seat by the seatbelt during the whole ordeal. They were stuck in that awkward position for what felt like forever, and the seatbelt was digging into her, making it super uncomfortable. To make matters worse, she had this pounding headache that lasted quite a while afterwards, which only added to her stress. She couldn't help but wish she'd gotten more rest before the dinner service, because this incident seriously threw a wrench into her entire day. And I mean, if there was ever a reasonable excuse given on Hell's Kitchen, that was it. Well, that was a pretty rough ride. Too soon, man, too soon. Anyway, if you want to talk more about what happened and dissect each of these moments, make sure to join me on my Discord server for free. And guess what? I even have an exclusive server for those of you who are interested. Well, I'm excited to see you there, but before you leave, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here. It's even crazier.